the top five Minnesota Vikings running backs of all time, not named Adrian Peterson on today's Minnesota Sports Rankum. This is Minnesota Sports Rankum, part of Locked On Sports Minnesota, and it starts now. It's the controversial show that settles debates and starts new ones. It's Minnesota Sports Rankum on Locked On Sports Minnesota. Welcome in. I'm Sam Ekstrom, at Sam Ekstrom on Twitter, part of the Ron Johnson Show, host of the Minnesota Football Party, and sidekicks with Luke Inman, who joins us every Thursday on this program. Luke underscore Spinman on Twitter. He writes the NFL Draft Buzz newsletter. Watch for that weekly. You can subscribe to that for free at LockdownPodcast.com slash newsletters. He joins today to discuss the following. Top five Minnesota Vikings running backs. Here's the caveat. Not named Adrian Peterson. Too obvious. No contest. It would take all the, the drama out of it, Luke. Everybody's talking about running backs right now, particularly franchise running backs and how they're not going to get paid. And we might have seen the death of the franchise running back. Well, we're going to get nostalgic today, Luke, and talk about some of the Vikings greats from years past. What do you think? Uh, Yeah, another great concept here, Sam, with all the drama that's just ensued this week with the running backs. You mentioned the newsletter coming out this week. I wrote about all the drama this week. Austin Eckler, Derrick Henry, you name it, and that running back position, the way it's evolved, or should I say devolved, Sam, over the last five, ten years. I will say with this list today, once you take out AP, the obvious 1-1, as you mentioned, this thing gets really tricky. Just can't wait to compare and contrast and tell you why my list is is a little bit better than yours, Sam, per usual. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm totally in agreement with that. It usually is. You, you think about this in a great way. Uh, today's show brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook partner of Locked On. Make every moment more. FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. I, uh, I touted Cameron Smith to win the Open yesterday. And uh, he didn't put together the best first round. Still time for him, though, to to charge at Royal Liverpool. Did you get uh, good value, at least? I mean, what are we talking? Well, he won it last year. That's right. And he won his last live event. And he was plus 2,200. Yeah, that's the, great the, value. Yeah, top top guys were like plus 650, plus 750. Felt like I was getting great value there on Cam Smith. Um, rough start. Rough start for him, though. Uh, leader is an amateur at this moment, Christian Lamprecht, minus mm. five. Okay. So that's your uh, your golf update for the day. Let's talk football. Customarily, we start with number five, and we start with Luke Inman. Who you got? Yeah, number five on my list. And say it with me, Billy Boom Boom, boom Brown. Boom, this guy brown. makes the list just for the name itself. Billy Boom Boom Brown. I actually texted my dad last night and said, all right, top five Vikes running backs all time. He texts back, Billy Boom Boom Brown. I thought he was filling out an ad lib or something, Sam. I had no idea what he was saying. Did some research. Sure enough, Billy B, this guy was an absolute stud through the 60s and early 70s, which means you hear about all those amazing Viking Super Bowl teams back in the day. Purple People Eaters, Fran Tarkenton. Those guys get all the love and attention. Billy Boom Boom Brown, he was the man in the backfield carrying the rock, doing his part to help build that Vikings dynasty from that era. 13 years in Minnesota, too, which you think about how long it felt AP was here in Minnesota. This guy was here three more seasons than that. And I just think about the violence back then, how brutal the game was, and to hold up that long and play running back in that era. I mean, that had to be the most physically damaging position to play with such constant wear and tear week in and week out. That in itself, 13 years, is incredible to think about. So 13 years, four-time Pro Bowler, Helped again, the Vikings get to all those Super Bowls in the process. Billy Boom Boom Brown, Sam, not only did he have the name, he had the game to back it up. Fifth all-time in Vikings rushing yards. So he comes in at number five on my list. I'm glad you brought up Boom Boom because I I left him off my list. I just couldn't I couldn't oh, put a guy you. on who had 3.5 career yards per attempt. Pretty good back era. then. Pretty good back different then. Different era. Yeah, not not bad. They didn't have the the mid zone run scheme figured out yet. They were just running up the middle. Um, but boom, boom, definitely an honorable mention for me. You know, there's someone I feel bad for sometimes. There's a guy out there who just he's the um, he's the Bill Buckner of Vikings lore. Oh no, um, and it's not Gary Anderson. He was probably a better example. This is the other Bill Buckner, Darren Nelson. 
Darren Nelson is defined by one play, 1987 NFC Championship. Wade Wilson drops back, fires it to the pylon through the hands of Darren Nelson. We'll never know if the Vikings could have reached the Super Bowl because Darren Nelson couldn't hang on to the ball. That's defined his career. But you know what? It was not a bad career. So I'm going to stand up and pound the table for Darren Nelson, who had a nice five-year peak from 1983 to 1987, the year of the infamous play. He had over 5,000 yards from scrimmage. Now, he was a dual purpose. He he wasn't necessarily a 1,000-yard guy year in, year out on the ground, but you put in the passing game, and suddenly those numbers look really, really nice. Get him in your PPR league. He had over 600 receiving yards as a running back in 1983 and 593 receiving yards in 1986. Those are big numbers, even for a modern-day running back. 20 career touchdowns, and again, averaged over 1,000 scrimmage yards per year during that five-year peak. Ended his Vikings career with over 4,000 on the ground, over 2,000 through the air. I'm giving it to Darren Nelson just because I got some sympathy for him. Yeah, I love that one, Sam, because we talk about all the time in today's Pass Happy League, who's the Alvin Kamaras? Who's the guys that can catch passes out of the backfield? Back in that day, didn't see that too often. So to see those receiving stats as well shows you just what a dual threat he was and how special that really was back in that era too. So I love that one. Number four on my list, it's Dalvin. Third all-time in rushing yards for the Vikings with almost 6,000. Then adds another almost 2,000 in the passing game as well. Only played six seasons and still made four Pro Bowls. I mean, that alone tells you how special this guy was. I'll never forget Sam studying him coming out of Florida State in 2017. And the one thing he had over every single running back in that class, the ability to go from zero to 100 on a dime. Like the acceleration and the quick feet was out of this world and what made him so special and dangerous and dynamic still to this day even. And I think about people who maybe say he's lost a step now. Go watch that catch and run versus the Colts to tie the game with a minute left and just watch his feet. There isn't many people in the game at any position who play with that kind of quickness and burst in the lower body. So physically, he was so special. The two things you wish you look back and say, man, that really ruins some of his momentum, kind of puts a little asterisk by him. The injuries, obviously, and the fumbles, 19 fumbles in 72 games. That's a fumble in less than one in four games. That, that's just too much, Sam. And then right out the gate with the injuries, tears his ACL in week four at home versus the Lions. I was at that game on the sidelines taking pictures. I'll never forget it. Vikes go on to lose that game after an Adam Thielen fumble right at the end as well. He only plays in 10 games the following year misses seven games over the next three years. So I think if you take out all these injuries and the fumbles, I think he's without a doubt the next best running back in Vikings history behind Adrian Peterson, even in just six years, which is wild to think about. That's how electric and game-changing Dalvin Cook really was. Dalvin, number four on my list. Yeah, and we're talking now about how running backs spend a lot of their primes in college, where they're the healthiest, they're still young, they've got, you know, don't have as much mileage on. Um, well, Dalvin, two of his prime years, 22 and 23, were spent mostly injured, right? With the ACL, which cost him a season where he got off to a great start, and then 2018 really never recovered. I mean, he had the hamstring that was lingering, he was in and out of that lineup. Uh, did not have a very successful year that year either. So we lost kind of two years of Dalvin's prime, and he still put together a great four-year stretch. He'll pop up a little later in my list. I'm going to go with not Boom Boom Brown, Ted Brown, Thomas Edward Brown, the first-round pick of the 1979 draft. And if you go through this list, Luke, you see a lot of that, a lot of first-round running backs, just a different time. Running backs were valued. You took them in the first round. Obviously, AP. Darren Nelson, who I had, was a first-round pick. Ted Brown, 16th overall, 1979. I know you scouted that draft class very closely. Huge. But once again, I love Ted Brown for his versatility and his ability to, to get it done in the passing game. Just listen to his 1980 and 1981 stats. 1980, uh, 1,535 scrimmage yards, 10 touchdowns. The next year, 1,700 57 scrimmage yards, eight mm. touchdowns, just that two year stretch alone, one of the best in Minnesota Vikings history. And that's putting him up there 
you know, with a Peterson, with a Cook, just from overall production from the line of scrimmage. Not the most efficient back, you know, in terms of running the ball. None of these guys were in that era. But if you tally it up at the end of his career, all spent in Minnesota, by the way, an eight-year career, over 4,500 rushing yards, almost 3,000 receiving yards. So again, I love the versatility. He was a Swiss Army knife. Ted Brown, number four on my list. Great call out there. Love that. Uh, Number three on my list, Robert Smith just squeaks by Dalvin for me. I mean, you're splitting hairs, though, Sam, from a statistical standpoint. And I think people forget, even though Robert Smith played two more years in Minnesota, so the argument always is, well, Dalvin put up better numbers in less games. No, he really didn't. Smith was buried on the depth chart the first few years behind Herschel Walker when he got here in the early 90s and never really got to start those first two years. So when you just look at the game started, check this out. Dalvin Cook, Robert Smith, exact same amount of games started, 72 by each. So when you think about it like that, it's a lot easier to compare these numbers. Smith edges them out with almost 1,000 more rushing yards And I get it. Dalvin's got him in touchdowns and total scrimmage yards, which is huge. But again, I go back to the fumbles, Sam. In the same amount of games, 72 games started. Cook has 19 fumbles. Robert Smith only has nine. Smith's fumbling twice a season at most. Dalvin, he's fumbling once almost every three games. That's what gives him the edge just ever so slightly for me. And of course, a thousand more rushing yards uh, pretty much seals the deal, I think, at the end of the day. So you ask me tomorrow, I mean, I may have these two flip-flop. That's how interchangeable these two are. How similar of production when you just line them up right next to each other, A and B, and you think about, again, the exact same amount of games started, which is pretty wild. Robert Smith, though, number three on my list, and an abrupt ending to his career, by the way, which Mm -hmm. was, if you think back, highly debated, highly talked about at the time. This guy was supposed to hit the market and get paid a huge contract Instead, he just walks away from the game. Almost unheard of in today's day and age. Robert Smith, number three. Yeah, funny because at that time, Robert Smith, age 28, maybe almost 29, teams are clamoring. Robert, let us give you a huge sum of money. And now today, you couldn't find a team Mm -hmm. that would want to give a running back that age a big sum of money. Robert Smith would probably have at his career end because nobody wanted him at that point. Although he did have a very nice peak, and he is my number three back as well. And like you said, I'm, as we speak, toggling back and forth between Dalvin Cook and Robert Smith. You look at their four-year peaks, and I like to look at the the most meaningful stretch of these guys' career and kind of isolate it. It's so similar. This is Robert Smith from 97 to 2000. 4,989 yards. Dalvin Cook's four-year peak the last four years. 5,024 yards. So that is a difference of 35 yards. That's crazy. In the, in and those you're talking just windows. rushing. Just rushing, rushing yards. Yeah, yep. that's crazy. Uh, neither of them tremendous uh, in the in the receiving game. Robert Smith had just over 1,000 and six touchdowns. Dalvin Cook, 1,400 yards and three touchdowns in that stretch. Uh, 16 fumbles for Dalvin, six fumbles for Robert Smith. So it, it really... I don't even know why I'm going with Robert Smith here. Like in Dalvin Cook, spoiler alert, is going to be a little bit higher. Um, maybe just because uh, it ended early mate, for him. Maybe because he kind of spent the first four years buried on the depth chart, so he didn't really realize his full potential. And maybe it's because he had two Hall of Fame receivers taking attention away from him. Uh, he had the really the ultimate decoys. I mean, no one was loading the box up against those Minnesota Vikings. So that's why Robert Smith, again, in that stretch, five yards of carry, super efficient. Um, he's my number three Vikings running back of all time and definitely a good case for number two on this list that ha- does not have Adrian Peterson. Absolutely. Splitting hairs again, just kind of depends on what day or what side of the bed you wake up on. It's Mm -hmm. like, okay, Robert Smith today or Dalvin Cook. I'll be interested to see when we look back in 15, 20 years, once the dust settles, just to kind of compare those guys apples to apples once again. Uh, Number two on my list, I go Chuck Foreman. I mean, he takes over for Billy Boom Brown in the early 70s for seven season Sams, was an absolute monster, comes out of the gate, wins the rookie of the year title, makes it to five straight Pro Bowls. Not only did he... Win the Rookie of the Year, Sam. Made the Pro Bowl as well as a rookie. Five straight Pro Bowls following that. Wins the NFC MVP in 1976. 
I didn't even know that was a thing, be totally honest, but he does. Most rushing yards, excuse me, more rushing TDs than Dalvin Cook, more rushing TDs than Robert Smith, second most in franchise history with 52 rushing TDs. And then you throw in the receiving yards. Oh, my gosh. What One of the first real pass-catching backs the Vikings had that could dominate on the ground and through the air. 9,000 yards from scrimmage, over 1,000 more than Cook and Smith, over 100 more receptions than both those guys as well. This dude, absolute beast. Only got him for seven years. I say only in air quotes, but only got him for seven years. Uh, I think he has to be considered one of the all-time great offensive weapons. Forget about the positions. One of the best offensive weapons in Vikings history. Chuck Foreman, number two on my list. Before we continue with my number two and then both of our number ones, a reminder that we are brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook partner of Locked On. Uh, just check the live lines on the, the Open Championship. Tommy Fleetwood trying to win in his home country. He had a minus five first round. He's plus 650, the current favorite. You can bet that live at FanDuel, or you can bet baseball. Yeah, the Twins have been playing well in Seattle, and they are underdogs once again this afternoon at 2 p.m., uh, plus 102, so just a little plus money on the Minnesota Twins. You can bet that money line, run line for that game and all the other Major League Baseball games at FanDuel. Here's their cool new promotion that you can access, fanduel.com slash locked on. Ten times your initial bet back in bonus bets, up to $200. So bet 20, get 200. That's in bonus bets, and it doesn't matter whether you win or lose. It's free cash. Great promotions all the time at FanDuel. Get paid instantly when you win, and it is just so easy and intuitive to use. Check it out today, fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more at FanDuel, an official partner of Major League Baseball. All right, my number two, and I'm already I'm already worried that I've forgotten someone, or you've gone off the board with your number one because – um, my number two is Dalvin Cook. We already talked about the the debate between Smith and Cook. And, you know, I saw both of their careers. I saw Robert Smith when I was younger. I saw Dalvin Cook now. And Dalvin Cook's raw ability is just insane. Um, the, the lateral quickness, the vision, the breakaway speed. When he was healthy, Luke, he was so good and so promising, and it's a shame that injuries always played such a big role in his career. But um, you're like someone's going to get a really good player. Whoever signs him this year is going to get a quality running back, one of the three best in Minnesota Vikings franchise history. Um, I remember watching him in his very first game against Atlanta, and I think we assumed that the Vikings had found a star. It did not take long for him to warm up. And then the ACL happened. And then the trickle down effect from there. Did we really ever see Dalvin cook at his max potential? We only saw him for three and a half games before that knee injury kind of derailed things. And still the numbers he put up very impressive. There are plenty of, plenty of knocks uh, here and there on Dalvin cook, but I think his skill, his raw ability makes him number two on this non Adrian Peterson list. So Luke, I'm I am fully expecting Leroy Horde here at number one. Give it to me. Not far off. Mo Williams. No, I'm kidding. Yet you're right, though. I am going way off script for my number one. Just like when I had Daniel Carlson as my number one Rick Spielman draft pick of all time. Because I think when you think about the phrase running the football, this guy changed the game and the way you think about which players can be viewed. As runners of the football, this guy was the catalyst for an entire new breed of athletes that are now in today's day and age superstar Sam because of what he did and the way he paved the way for all the dual threat quarterbacks who came after him. I'm talking about Fran Tarkington. I know very first of his kind, the OG one of one, the first true running quarterback to ever do it. Never in the history of the game was it allowed or was it normalized for a quarterback to run with the ball. And because of him, he changed the way coaches look at the quarterback position. He changed the way coaches play defense. He was the sole reason defenses had to come up with the quarterback spy on the field. And now you got guys like Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts. They're all able to thrive and be viewed as the best quarterbacks, the elite of the elite in the league, because Fran Tarkin was able to flip the script for them and allow them to be looked at 
even back in college, to be scouted as more than just this gimmicky player coming out of college. So for a quarterback to rank 13th all-time in franchise history in rushing yards and 12th all-time in rushing TDs, that speaks volumes to me. We talked about him when we made our Mount Rushmore last week. Those four spots on our Mount Rushmore, save for guys who changed the way we look at the game and were pioneers for generations after them. So look past the numbers for a second in the position. Just think about the influence on the NFL game and what this league would look like without Fran Tarkington running the ball. He's number one on my list. How about that? Hey, respect for shaking it up. I, I well, totally... Well, it's either that or it's like Chester Taylor, you know, no respect, no disrespect to Chester. Love Chester. But it's like, ah, man, it gets so tough getting the weeds with that four, five, six, seven, don't you? I, I really tried to make the case for Leroy Horde too. I did the research, tried to come up with like the smoking gun stat that. That, would, uh, that would give it to him. I mean, Fran Tarkenton, 13th all time in Vikings rushing history. So... It's insane. Ahead of Dante, too. Mm -hmm. who, you know, a lot of people would have, uh, would have also considered a revolutionary runner. Uh, so number one for me, I'm just going chalk. I'm going Chuck, yeah. Chuck, Chuck. Uh, he started his career with six consecutive thousand yard seasons from scrimmage. One shy of what Adrian Peterson did, who started his career with seven consecutive. And again, this is the theme of my list, versatility. He was all about the receiving yards. He had no fewer than 300 receiving yards for the first six years of his career. Um, ended his Vikings tenure with almost 6,000 yards on the ground, over 3,000 uh, receiving yards. Total rushing yardage, fourth in Vikings history behind Peterson, Robert Smith, and Dalvin Cook. Chuck Foreman, and he's again... He's remained a good ambassador for the team, too. He does the interviews. He comes on the Ron Johnson show. He loves talking about Vikings history, loves talking about current Vikings running backs, and that's just kind of the endearing piece of these alumni whenever they stay connected to the team. And Chuck Foreman stayed very connected. So you got to love him for that, and you got to love what he did in an era, again, violent sport, hard to string good seasons together when you are playing that position in the 70s, and he stayed healthy for six seasons and put together six great seasons. Um, offensive Rookie of the Year in 1973 as well. So Chuck Foreman, the five-time Pro Bowler, is my number one non-AP running back on the list. I absolutely love it. Can't go wrong with that. Chuck Chalk, as you uh, dubbed it, 52 fumbles. I mean, holy smokes, that's tough to wrap your head around. But I think you got to remember it back in that era as well. These guys, the rules were different. These guys could just lay out, spear you, smash you to the ground. Things were a little bit different. And again, the production that came along with it, nobody close. Uh, I mean, besides AP, obviously, Sam, nobody comes close to what Chuck Foreman did for those seven years, too. Unbelievable. Next week on Minnesota Sports Rankum, our top five Vikings training camp stories of all time. There's been some craziness in Mankato over the years, and now Egan. That's next week on Minnesota Sports Rankum. He's Luke Inman at Luke underscore Spinman. I'm Sam Ekstrom at Sam Ekstrom. Let us know what you think of the list in the comments below on YouTube. Find us free and available wherever you get your podcast. That includes the SXM, Sirius XM app. For Luke, I'm Sam. Thanks for watching today on Locked On Sports Minnesota.